Hey everyone, it's Jenny Garcia and in this video I'm going to make some embellishments using the Into the Woods Project Life kit that I made and I'm going to have a link in the cards so you can check that video out and first I'm just going to put all my items except for the embellishment box in this Antonio's tray from Ikea and it's just easier to have everything organized and I'm gonna put my washi in my rhino that I love from We Are Memory Keepers and it doesn't fit all the washi because I have so much washi in that kit and all the kits I've made but I'm gonna pick my favorites or the ones that I think I'm gonna use the most then I went through my punches and I pulled out the ones that I was gonna use and I'm looking through the paper pad and looking for loose sheets of papers and scraps. And I'm also gonna go through my scraps drawer so I can pick out all the little pieces I want. And I'm just gonna show you a few of the punches that I'm using and the papers because this took a long time. I mean, if you're watching videos on YouTube or watching TV, it's a good thing to do to just grab your scraps and also grab your punches or your dies and start cutting away. And this is a great exercise for those days when you want to make something but you're not sure or you don't have enough mojo. And first I'm going to make these super easy and quick cork embellishments and I'm going to grab cork which was in my drawer of scraps. And I'm gonna stamp mainly circles or things that could fit well in a circle and I'm gonna stamp them on the cork and it doesn't have to turn out perfect I suggest that you leave enough space between each stamping which I did not do on the last two so I'm gonna punch one with my one inch and the second one I'm gonna have to use this punch from Epiphany Crafts which is really old and I do not recommend for this it's too tight and small but it turned out pretty cute I do like how it looks it's just hard to move inside of that punch it's a very small area or you can if you prefer to punch out the circles first and then stamps that also works and these are super simple. These are inspired by many sticker sheets by Studio Calico. They always have one, or at least they had to. They used to have sheets like these all the time. I don't know if cork is out. Trends change a lot in scrapbooking, so I just try to use what I like. Follow the trends that I do like, the ones I don't, I just pass and you see it got stuck in there and it was a pain in the booty so it's easier for me to punch with that one first and then stamp and I'm using a stamp from Kelly Perky one from Heidi Swap and one from Citrus Twist I'm also using uh, stays on ink you can also use Memento. I also like the color theory from Studio Calico if you want to stamp in color. Since, since this kit has a bunch of orange and green, I didn't think it would read well in the cork. I could have used brown, but I don't really have any brown ink. It's not a color that I often stamp or even use. I don't use that brown that often and that's why I one of the reasons I made this kit to push myself to use other colors that I don't use often and I tried to use the brilliance ink but it just didn't you couldn't see it very well so I just stamp in black and I got that Kelly perky stamps at Tuesday morning and you can see it in the haul that I posted a few days ago And it has a few things movie and music related so I thought they would make like good icons to put in the quirks 
and you don't have to stamp all of the circles you can leave a few to layer on the embellishments and this one I'm using it's from Ellie studio and I love it this is the it's a stamp about reading and I always use it and I always forget the name let me see it's called it doesn't have the name okay and I am terrible with names so yeah but it's a stamp from Ellie studio I don't know if they still have it but if they do you should get it if you like to read a lot and it also has generic things like the one I stamped said love this and read this and it says story most must read I love a good story which doesn't really have to be related to reading so I'm gonna make these tiny bows and I use uh, Maggie Holmes die which is ancient super old and before putting it together I curve the little bow with a tumble mono draw and pencil you don't have to do that you could either put it flat or just I don't know not curve it but I do like that little bit of weight and dimension that the curving adds and in the middle I'm gonna put a button using the tumble mono adhesive dots actually the adhesive dots not the mono and they are so so cute and later I'm gonna put one of those adhesive dots in the back and you can put adhesive on a paper like the extreme adhesive and then put the little embellishment with the adhesive dot on the back and you can give it to someone like a sticker pack and it looks really cute and I also mix and match scrapbook papers when I was doing this and I like how it turned out and this one I'm just gonna put a tiny heart in the middle which compared to the rest of the ones I made it's my least favorite because the button looks just so cute and I also used um, a bread for two of them and I love how the brad came out and it's a great idea to use those brads that are they have been in your stash forever and you have no idea how to use them it's a great way to use them and I love the to use the tumble extreme adhesive because it's super strong so your embellishment is not gonna come apart I'm going to use another button and a few of those buttons are from Studio Calico and I like that combination with the brown that has like little sparkles and blue and then the orange button and I don't have that many brats but I do have a few left that I really like and I can't seem to part ways with and that one was just in my stash of green but I have another one from the midway collection from October afternoon which I have to save because it's October afternoon which I miss so much could you imagine an October afternoon Christmas collection uh, I would love that but it's too bad and I'm using the we are memory keepers uh, piercer to put the brad but this one I think it was from those that Walmart used to sell for really cheap I had a bunch of those but I got rid of most of them and then the ones that I like I just put the took the brads out of the package and put them with the respective colors in the embellishment drawers and here I have one of the cork pieces and I'm just gonna layer pieces on top of each other and I wanted to show a little bit more of that cork so I used the Epiphany Crafts um, punch which is three and a quarter of an inch the other one from EK Success is one inch and I mix a lots of punches I use Fist Cars, EK Success the epiphany crafts one I can't remember what the other one square but yeah and I just punch in use the die for a bunch of little pieces and circles I just took one 
sheet of paper or scrap and put as many dice as I could and even after I used it with the dice I went with my punch and tried to get more punches out of that one and I'm gonna make this one like a little prize ribbon and I love these cute designs and I got this idea from I think there's a hard yes the hard day collection from crate paper has these and they are so cute they do have a little bit more volume because they have rosettes the ones that are folded but since I'm gonna use these mostly for project life I try to keep them as flat as possible And I'm just gonna keep layering things as as uh, what you want to do is make sure that a few of the layers show through at least a tiny little bit that shows even if when they are flat and they have no foam adhesive at all they look like they have dimension and I have had a piece of corrugated paper in that stash and I love using the corrugated paper for handmade embellishments because it gives it a little texture and it makes it look different I just love it and in this one I use one foam tab I think this was the only one where I use something and I also have a few of those hearts I have a bunch actually way too much I have in felt in faux leather material in paper that I use from scraps too and I have those of two lawn fawn um, hard dies I have one that is apart and one that is still together that way that the one that is apart it can squeeze in little corners and this is my favorite embellishment of the whole thing I made other ones that are more complicated and probably even cooler but I just love the corrugated the blue the brown it just looks so cute and of course I gotta use a little washi and I'm sorry but I filmed this and it was it, it was a weird day it was like super dark outside so I used all the lights and I don't know it the lights like off like it's either too much or not enough and I layered layered these um, cloud with a leaf from a citrus twist kit and it makes no sense like a leaf behind a cloud why but I like how it looks I think it looks pretty cute and as always I'm trying to jam more things in there even though it doesn't need any anything else but you know me I am an over embellisher and this is texture cardstock which is also really good for these small embellishments I just have a bunch I divided them by big circles smaller circles and scallop circles hearts and things like that so I can find them easier like if I want a smaller circle I can easily go to this little bowl if I want a heart I can go to the one on the right you can use the cork that you also step well the eye stamp but you know you can use uh, stamp cork I love those wood buttons Ugh, I love that kind of embellishment it's weird to use though they when you do project life it's kind of a bit of too much dimension but sometimes you just have to go for it and I took away the foam that, that it had in the back because I don't want extra dimension so I use the Tombow adhesive dot or you can use the Tombow extreme adhesive I've used both in this video and you can see later I also added some um, enamel dots and you also want to make sure that you want to put colors and papers that pop when they're together you don't want to blend it too much because then you don't really see 
all the layer the layers and the dimension and I have this um, little word little phrase sticker in my into the woods kit but it's mainly I, I was thinking so much about the orange that it's a bunch of summer words a few of them work but I don't know how much I'm gonna use it in that kit and the enamel shapes are from doodlebug and I also really like to use a circle stitch die from Lawn Fawn it's a little bit extra texture and detail and you s you're still gonna make a circle anyway so might as well make it stitch and those are my favorite dies Lawn Fawn and Sizzix and this is the washi from Maggie Holmes that I grabbed from Tuesday morning on my last haul but I have to say that I was disappointed. It's not very sticky, so I had to use my Tumbo Mono Adhesive Plus on it so it stayed still. And that cloud punch is from Fiskars and I love it. It's probably one of my favorite um, punches and it punches everything and I love how easy it is. It's, I think it's made for people that have like difficulty and arthritis and things like that and I think they nailed it. They're really easy to use even when hard when you use hard materials. And right now I'm making the tiniest price ribbon you have ever seen and it's so cute super tiny and it would fit in a photo like if you were gonna do a cluster in the corner that one would work really well And it would also be cool to include those like in your kid's lunchbox for doing something silly but nice or something like that. And they're really easy to make. The good thing about these, at least for me, is that I don't think way too much since I'm making so many, I don't pay much attention because normally I overthink the heck out of my layouts and my project life layouts too so these are like a nice exercise to let go from that pressure that I normally put on myself and I found this paper when I looked through the scraps again and I had to make a tiny bow with it and it's really old it's from Imaginis, I think. Yeah, but it, and I don't think Imaginis even exist anymore. So, and these are the ancient brads from October afternoon, and I'm gonna use the piercer again. And it's a bunch of layers, so sometimes it's kind of tricky. I liked it because it had mountains so you could see the mountains on that little bow and I found that banner and I thought that I would put the bow on top of the banner but I'm just gonna leave the bows alone and stop over embellishing the heck out of things And the green die is actually a tiny tag. It has like a little hole that you can put an eyelet or something like that, but I was too lazy. I didn't want to get my eyelet. And that is one lesson about having things handy. If they are a way you're gonna be like lazy like me and say, yeah, I don't have to go look for that now. And then you never use it. 
I actually have two packs of these brats, so I used one completely and I had a few repeats, but then I moved them to this paper too. And I'm gonna use one of the eyelets, uh, not actually eyelets, the brats. The ones that are plain, I'm gonna use um, that hole that was for, for the eyelet, and I'm gonna put one of another color in the middle. You gotta be careful because you can, if you don't use a pad, you will hurt your hand. Hasn't happened to me yet, which is a miracle, and it might happen next time because I just jinx myself, but just be careful. And I was between two colors, orange and green, and I figured that green was better because there was less colors between that brad and the green than the brad and orange. And these are my felt hearts. The cool thing about the felt hearts is that A, you can put them anywhere. And B, felt is like really cheap. Like for a sheet of the leatherette, it's like a dollar or so, something like that. And it's actually harder to, um, to use it with a die cut machine. But the felt is really inexpensive. It's easier to cut. And that is why I freaking love that little die. And of course, I gotta use a little bit of my staple stapler. And I also grabbed because I, I did a lot of um, die cutting and punching, but I did grab a few things from the embellishment box. And I'm gonna try to put more things in that little rice ribbon, but then I figured that it was just fine the way it was. And you can use that little embellishment for the cover of a CD that you're listening to or a song that you like in Pandora or whatever service you use your current playlist and now I'm gonna start making this shaker round embellishments and uh, these first ones are two inches and three quarters, that's with the Lawn Fawn die, stitch die actually. And I'm just gonna cut two of those, cut one in the middle, and make a sandwich. I'm gonna put adhesive, then the tool, and then the other piece. I'm not gonna put anything in the corners because I'm gonna stitch and I don't want, I, I want my needle to get as little glue as possible, none if it's possible. I'm gonna add some sequins of my sequin mix in the stock pocket and I'm gonna build them all first and then I'm gonna stitch them and for sewing make sure that uh, your needle is not too dull that it's not covering adhesive that you're using a good thread because I it was bunching up in the back ridiculously last time I made these in my last video the back were so bad it was tangled and ugly and then I figured after a lot of trying and googling and watching videos that maybe it was my thread so I switched my thread and actually the result was a lot better but it was a pain in the booty to figure out and also this is the part where you can put plain cardstock as the main circle and this is actually the one that is embossed it has little dots so it's not completely boring but since um, you're gonna put a lot of sequins on it and you're gonna kind of cover it then you can use a boring kind of background And I looked for my star sequence because I wanted to add even more 
to the little pockets I was making. The sequin mix is like to guide myself about what kind of things I want to use. If I wanted more white or more green or depending on the things that I was making that I know, okay, this is the Pretty Little Studio sequence. So let me go and use that one. And this bead scooper, it's from Bead Alon. I have the link below. I do have links below if you want to use them. They are affiliate links, but they do help the channel a little bit. And these is the only thread that I had that worked. And good thing that it kind of matches the collection. It's and I actually like it even more. It's like a little bit like a pop of color. And I love how they turn out. And I'm gonna make this bigger ones first. Then I'm gonna grab this two inches circles. And I'm gonna make a few more. I also have these scallop doily shape, whatever you wanna call them. Those are from Sizzix. And uh, they are a little bit bigger than two inches. I don't have the package down here right now, but I will also link this die below. And I just wanted a little something different than just a circle. And I actually really like how these turn out. And instead of cutting like a top half or a bottom half, I just went with the sides, which is a different design for me, but it's the same, same process. It just looks a tiny bit different. And it's pretty fun. And you don't have to buy actual tool like in a, like a fabric like if you have that that's perfect but if you just find like a ribbon spool that works perfect that's what I'm using I'm using the ones from May Arts and I love this sequin mix it has a few leaves it has wood color sequins white blue it's just so cute probably one of the favorite my favorite ones I've made and yesterday I went to Dollar Tree to get more of these slightly bigger um, like embellishment containers they're not called that but I call them that and of course after I love the bigger size I can't find it that's like a theme with Dollar Tree the second I love something they take it out and these are the smaller embellishments and I'm just gonna cut the excess of tool with my scissors and I gotta sharpen my scissors I'm so like into making the video like not get up and get new tools that I use my paper scissors with tool and I need to get new scissors, but I get weirdly attached to scissors. It's it's really weird. I'm more attached to scissors than I am to guillotines or trimmers. Like if a trimmer stops working and they don't make the blades anymore, like whatever, you're dead to me. But scissors is a different kind of theme. And these scissors are average. They're not even that amazing. So I don't know what's up with that. And as a child, I was like that. I think I had like two pairs of scissors through elementary. And I also cut the extra threads hanging around. And by the way, I'm going to embellish these, but you don't have to. It's, it's a me thing. And you can even make this even smaller, but... Um, I am so clumsy and kind of blind. <laughs> I'm afraid I will lose a finger, but you know what? Maybe in another video, I'll give it a try. And I use the Tombow Extreme Adhesive to glue the little leatherette hearts. And I actually love how the leatherette hearts look rather than the felt, but they are such a pain in the butt to cut. And they like make my cutting pads 
dirty and it's annoying because then you have to like wash them with a metal brush it's you can do it but it has to be like one day of just doing that and you're done And I'm gonna try to keep it simple here, which is hard for me, as you know. But since all the fun should be in the pocket, I'm gonna try to control myself. And I found another one of those um, wood buttons. So I took away the foam and just used my Tombow Extreme adhesive. And I needed something else because I couldn't stop myself. So that's what the staple is for. And that fox is from a very old Freckle Fawn kit. I don't get those anymore, but I have I, I was a subscriber for such a long time that I'm um, set for life. I'm just using this piercer to cut the washi a little bit. I don't have that many orange um, stickers with boards so I might need to check out if I find a few of those in the pretty little studio shop and that button I love how it turned out but it was a pain in the booty because I wanted to put something on the top but I didn't know what exactly would look good and you see I had to use the Tumbo Mono Adhesive Plus for the washi, otherwise it wasn't gonna glue. And that sucks, I hate that. I, it's new, I got you out of the package, you should be awesome. So, um, I wanted to thread this twine through the little buttonholes. And to help the twine get into those tiny holes, and that's the May Arts twine, which is even thicker than the regular twinery and whatever whatever else you ever bought that one is really thick so it's kind of a pain to put through the holes so what I did was use the Tombow Mono Aqua Liquid Glue to smooth down kind of like a hair gel situation tame the hairs so they would go through that little hole and I struggled with it as you can see and it dries clear and it's not dirty at all or anything like that so if you want to keep it you can I always cut a little bit of my bows because it's never the same size but if you're gifted that way you don't have to cut it and I was trying to switch it to the side but it wasn't gonna budge so I was like you know what it looks fine like that And I don't cover the stitching because it costs a lot of effort to put that stitching in there. So I am not going to cover the whole thing up. And a few of these buttons are from Studio Calico. I either got them really cheap or I got them one of those grab bags. I don't know because I don't need more buttons. But they are really nice. The pattern is really cute. So if you if you need buttons, then I would recommend going to Studio Calico. Although now there's a company called Buttons Galore, and it comes with a really make pretty mix of buttons and sequins and beads. And I've seen a few of the um, sponsor ads on my Instagram, and they like them. They're really cute. And I'm gonna try a few things with these two embellishments and I'm gonna look through the stash for this kit and try the wood buttons but then I figured that they are just fine that way and I might just 
you know, wait until I do my project life spread or my card or whatever I'm doing to put something on those. And I'm keeping them in this tiny box that I got from Dollar Tree. So next time I'm not going to find it, but <laughs> it's a really cool box if you need to organize a few things. This is cool also for your December daily stash or your October daily. It's tiny, so you can put your things in there. And that is all. It's a long video. Thank you if you <laughs> hang, hang in there. Uh, I'm just going to show some close-ups of the actual embellishments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day in a great fall. Bye.